Hello Year 3 and today we are learning to understand what the Bible teaches Christian people about God, life, the universe and everything. Well we're going to start by calming with a rainbow breath. So listen to the chime until you can no longer hear it. The chime helps us to feel peaceful and calm. Right, close your eyes and listen. Hopefully you did a big breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Have a little go again. Well, I don't know if you're relaxed, but I certainly am. Today, we are concentrating on the stories in the Bible as a whole. Now, the Bible tells a big story of God's dealing with human beings. The main themes in the Bible are only four, though. So we've got that God loves humans and created a wonderful world for people, which is called the creation story. The humans disobey God and go their own way, the fall down. God sends his son, Jesus, the incarnation, to save people and to bring them back to God, the salvation. Those pink words are really important to Christians as they guide them in their remembrance when they look at the Bible. We are going to have a look at a story. Now, this story is the whole of the Bible. The Bible is an amazing book. It's not just a collection of stories. It's one big story where everything points to Jesus. It begins with God creating a perfect world and placing a perfect couple in the middle of it. But Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sin and death entered the world. God decided to judge the earth by sending a great flood, but he told Noah to build an ark so the animals and Noah's family could be saved. One of Noah's descendants was a man named Abraham. God promised Abraham that his family would be used to bless the whole world. The Israelites would have a special land to live in and would be as countless as the stars in the sky. When a famine spread through the land, God used Joseph to bring the Israelites to Egypt. But after a time, the Egyptians made them their slaves. So God raised up another leader, Moses, to rescue his people and lead them to the promised land. God performed amazing miracles along the way. He taught the Israelites how to live. He showed them how to build a tent called the tabernacle, where sacrifices could be offered for their sins. But even after they arrived in the promised land, the Israelites continued to rebel. They worshiped idols and demanded a human king instead of God. God was patient and allowed them to have a king. One of those kings was David, who defeated Goliath. David's son Solomon built a beautiful temple for God that replaced the tabernacle. But Solomon's sin caused the kingdom to be split in two. During this difficult time, prophets like Isaiah told the people about the Messiah. The Messiah would make things right with God again. Even when the Israelites were conquered by other kingdoms, they held on to the promise that one day the Messiah would come and rescue them. In time, God led the Israelites back to the land. The temple was rebuilt. Jerusalem's walls were repaired. The prophet Malachi foretold that the Messiah was on the way. Then, silence. For 400 years, 
God remained quiet. The silence was broken by the cry of a tiny baby born in a manger. His name was Jesus. Jesus was the Messiah. He lived a sinless life, performed miracles, and showed the people how to return to God again. Some believed Jesus, most did not. He was arrested and crucified on a cross. And then something amazing happened. Three days after his death, Jesus came to life again, conquering death and defeating sin once and for all. At the beginning, we said that all of the Bible points to Jesus. So you might think it's strange that he appears so late in the story. Or does he? Look closely and you'll find signs that point to Jesus right from the very beginning. God used the ark to save Noah, pointing to the day when we would find salvation in Jesus. God promised to bless the world through Abraham's family, which he did through Jesus. The sacrifices pointed to Jesus, who became the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. The pages of the Bible are filled with stories that point us to Jesus. But the story doesn't end there. Jesus' friends carried his message to the ends of the earth. Faithful followers like Peter, Paul, and others shared the good news wherever they went. And you and I have the same calling. We are to share Jesus wherever we go until one day he returns to make everything right again. Yes, the Bible is full of amazing stories, but really, it's all about Jesus. That's the story. That's his story. that told you a little bit about the stories that are in the Bible. So the Bible is told through many different stories as we learned last week and we've looked at most of them actually. So we've had a look at Noah and um, we've had a look at Moses and the ten plagues and the Red Sea and Mount Sinai and then we've had a look at Ju Jerusalem destroyed um, and then in year two you would have had a look at Jesus' birth, death and resurrection. So we've done most of the Bible actually already. Now, the Lord gave Moses and the people ten rules to follow. Great. Okay. Oh no, the people kept disobeying the rules and wandering away from God. Mm, I don't think these are in order. Jesus came alive three days later and lives forever. Great. Oh no, Jesus killed, jealous people killed Jesus on the cross. Can you work and have a look and see if you can pop these seven main parts of the Bible into order? We've got three left that I haven't read yet. God came to earth in Jesus to show how to live and love. God made a lovely world and oh no, humans didn't follow God's way. So have a look and see if you can pop them in order. When you've popped them in order, restart the video. Pause now. Well, hopefully you've got those in order. Let's have a look. So the first one was God made a lovely world, which was great. Oh no, the humans didn't follow God's way. That was when Noah and the flood and then God gave Moses and the people ten rules to follow, which was great, the Ten Commandments. And we learned about that. Oh no, the people kept disobeying the rules and wandered away from God again. God came to earth in Jesus to show us how to live and love, which was great. So that was that 400 years that, oh no, the people kept disobeying before Jesus came. Oh no, jealous people killed Jesus on a cross. 
and we've learned about that and the resurrection. Jesus came alive three days later and lived forever. I wonder how many you got right of those. Hopefully quite a few. Who do you think these words describe? Have a little look and read through all the words and then think about who they describe. Pause the film. Okay, let's see if you are right. So all these words describe God. And they have been used in the Bible to describe God. The stars, the maker, a baby, well that was part of Jesus, which is part of God. A circle, the wind, um, a flaming fire was the bush in the desert for Moses. Someone to hold your hand and guide you. A feeling of a warm heart. A doctor, a gold ring, a rescuer. I've put a lifeboat worker to help us work out what they meant. But someone who saves us. Think about the storm in the, in the lake where Jesus asked the storm to stop. A cleaner, he cleaned people's feet and he looked after people. And a dove, the dove that they sent out from Noah's ark to see if the world was ready again. These are all words that Christians use to describe God. I'd like you to choose five. See which ones you think are most likely to describe God. Might be a father, or someone to hold your hand. Or you might think God is like a deep sea. Have a little think. And pause the film and write down your five. Pause now. Okay, hopefully you have your five that you would choose to describe God. All of the words have been used to describe God in the Bible. Do you think any of these ideas are really important? And should we find a way to get them into our special book? Well, there's lots of ways that people have written or done things about God. They have done poetry, they've done pictures, there is artwork and stories, plays, children's songs. Can you think of any more ideas? We're going to have a go, okay? We are going to have a go at listening to some poems that have been written about God. So this one's called Created. When God created you, he knew what he would see. Someone that wasn't perfect or in heaven you would be. I like that one. Searching for God by John P. Reed. When searching for God, there's no need to look far. He's not in the clouds or some far away star. <laughs> and Day by Day by Lenora McWhorfer. Day by day, God walks with me and my burdens he helps me bear. Each step I take along the way, my loving Father is always there. So these people have shown a totally different way of looking about, looking about God, about them thinking about their God. So we're going to have a go today at writing a poem. Okay, It's going to be a list poem, which means that you have the start of each sentence is like a list. And I've done one to show you how to do it. So each line is going to start with God is like. Okay. And then you can choose like one of your five pieces that you had, or you can think of something totally different, and then you're going to say why. So you're going to say because. So I'm going to read you my poem. So, God is like a sunset because the sun may be gone, but God is still there. God is like a rain cloud because they are always somewhere. God is like the sunshine because it will always come back. God is like a story, because you'll always want to find out what happens next. God is like a wave, because his love is like the waves that never stop crashing on the shore. God is like a balloon, because you want to keep it forever.